Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good morning and best wishes, best regards from Geneva. You have come together for the annual thematic meeting of USAID's Interagency Youth Working Group. And the theme of this year's meeting is the big picture, viewing gender, sexual and reproductive health and in very young adolescents through a wide angle lens. Unfortunately, neither my colleagues nor I can be with you today because we have a governing body meeting underway here in Geneva. We are sorry to miss you what prom to miss you and to miss what promises to be an interesting meeting on a very important subject. But I understand that colleagues from our regional offices in New Delhi and Washington will be with you and they will represent WHO. Now, as you know, I'm the director of one of the departments at WHO in Geneva, which is called Reproductive Health and Research. And our department led the work in this area by preparing a review and by convening a global meeting on the sexual and reproductive health of very young adolescents in 2010. Since 2010, we have been moving forward in this area. So I'm especially grateful to the organizers of the conference for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this meeting with a very brief presentation. And maybe I should tell you a bit about my background, but I'm an obstetrician gynecologist with over 35 years of experience in different parts of the world. I've been dealing with sexual and reproductive health problems in adolescents and in very young adolescents. And there are three, at least three good reasons to address young adolescents. And then we, we target the age group between 10 to 14 years. First of all, this is a time with enormous physical, psychological and social changes. And the changes are beginning or well underway. Physically, it is a time when puberty occurs and the growth spurt takes off. Psychologically, it is a time when the cognitive changes of adolescents are beginning and when emotional and social competences are starting to be built. It is also a time when the first steps in the development of a sense of personal identity and autonomy are being taken. Socially, it is a time when parental influence begins to decline a bit and when the influence of others, including peers and other adults, begins to increase. And I've been working in, in many parts of the world, mainly in Africa, also in Latin America and in China. And I know that in low and middle income countries, two very important social changes occur. Many young adolescents leave school. Unfortunately, a country where I worked and lived, such as Kenya, has an enormous uh, dropout from schools uh, of teenage girls. Many of them are withdrawn from school by their family. They are pushed out of school by a system which does not have enough place for them, or they drop out on their own accord. Globally, only 6 out of 10 secondary school age children are enrolled in secondary schools. I've seen girls who had to leave school because they were pregnant. They were made pregnant by their boyfriends or by the teachers. The teachers are still there. The girls' future is at stake. In least developed countries, less than one in three children is at school and this situation is further exacerbated by disparities within countries including gender disparities many girls are married globally one in three girls is married by the age of 18 years and one in seven by the age of 15. take into account that every day every day there are 39,000 girl childs who are married. Can you imagine? 39,000. This is enormous. It is a global problem with rates greater than 30% occurring in 42 countries and with enormous disparities between countries and within countries. 
The rate in uh, Niger, for example, is estimated uh, to be 75% and in nearby Senegal, 33%. Secondly, young adolescents experience important public health problems, female genital mutilation and early initiation of sexual activity with the attendant risk of early childbearing and sexually transmitted infections. Again, in some African settings, I've been... I've seen young girls who were uh, brought to the hospital bleeding, almost bleeding to death because of female genital mutilations. I've treated girls of 10 years old with gonorrhea. I've seen girls of 12 years old dying because of uh, unclean, illegal abortion. An estimated risk of an estimated, sorry, 3 million girls are at risk of undergoing female genital mutilation in Africa alone every year. And an estimated 1 million births occur every year to girls below 15 years. These are child mothers and this has enormous implication for their own health, for the babies, as well as social implications. Thirdly, adolescents and very young adolescents is a time when attitudes and values that have, are made and that have enormous implications on the life of these young girls and boys and the life of those around in that time period but also in the years ahead. There are some figures. For example, a secondary analysis of DHS data points out that around one in two boys between 15 and 19 years old from many countries they believe they have seen but they believe that the husband is justified in beating his wife under certain conditions and even worse in a lot of country a same percentage of girls of the same age agree that the husband is justified to beat his wife if she burns the food if she argues without telling him if she neglect the children or if she refuses sexual relations. Clearly, there are good reasons to address young adolescents. Of course, our work should not begin then. But using a life course approach, we should work with parents-to-be, with parents, with children, with adolescents, and with then adults. So as, um, as I told you earlier, I'm the new director of this uh, unit here in, uh, in Geneva, Reproductive Health and Research. And together with my team, I'm leading a great, fantastic team here, together with my team, we have identified adolescents, sexual and reproductive health as a priority. And we are building a portfolio of research because that is our mandate here in Geneva to help you with conducting the research that will lead to guidelines, to policy and to actions. And on the one hand, we are setting out to address adolescents, including very young adolescents, in our research work on developing global estimates of sexually transmitted infections in adolescents, assessing also laws and policies on child marriage, improving access to comprehensive sexuality education and health services such as contraception and HPV vaccine. On the other hand, we are working on two issues that are specific to young adolescents, which is developing guidance for those developing research protocols on ethical considerations in carrying out research on adolescents. Because, you know, doing research, very often we are asked, yes, but these are sensitive questions and you cannot address these questions directly to adolescents without parental consent or without uh, in, involving the teachers in schools. So there is a need for a good protocol on how to address, how to carry out in a very ethical way, how to carry out this research in this sensitive and this very young adolescents group. So we do that in collaboration with John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, and we also work on the nature of so socialization of young adolescents and the effects of this on age and on context of sexual debut. Uh, what I said earlier as an example, we want to know why young boys and young girls in some society, they behave probably because they have seen that 
not only from their parents, but they have also seen that in schools, and we want to have a better understanding of this gender socialization. Now, as we build our research portfolio, we are also building alliances with academic institutions to strengthen the partnership in carrying out much needed research. But we are also reaching out and working and strengthening our working mechanisms with governments and with NGOs and civil society organizations that have a key role to play in taking the research evidence, the data that come from the research, and to translate them into policy and practice. Otherwise, it's just research to publications will not change the world. And we want to have, with our research, we want to have an impact on what is going on in society. So we want to identify in the most relevant research issues. And we are looking forward very much to learning about the outcomes of your meeting. Again, we regret not to be there, but we want to work with you to improve our understanding and our response to the need of needs of this very young adolescents. I want to congratulate the organizers and I wish you all a very successful meeting. I can't, I, I, I don't know how many exactly you are and what your age distribution is, but I hope at least that there are some adolescents were in this in this conference or some youth workers or representative of adolescents because I remember the messages of my teenage son when he was 16 you said mom you are always in meetings talking about adolescents but you don't talk enough with us we he calls us we you are the analog generation but we are the digital so you need our brains and I think they are right we have to understand what goes on in their uh, community and their way of thinking and we have to be cool together with them to bring that message to them so i hope that you also involve the adolescents in your conference and in your way of working all the best thank you